Hello and welcome back to some more Panda Inc and subsequently Software Inc. As you can probably tell by the start of this video, this is going to be a very different episode of Panda Inc. We are finally finished with our Panda Inc HQ. So this is the culmination of three live streams and about 11 hours worth of footage. Now don't worry, it's been edited down as you can probably tell by the length of this video. But yeah, 11 hours worth of footage has gone into this. It's playing back at about eight times speed, so I apologize if parts of it are a little bit hard to follow. And I've also cut out about half of the footage. So what you're watching is a very minimalistic time lapse of what happened on stream. If you guys were around in stream, thank you so much for coming out. And please do leave a comment down below letting me know that you were there for this process. Getting started here, we're just building up a little bit of an entrance area for our car park, which I think is going to be really nice. We've done this for a couple of reasons. The first reason is I didn't want a separate entrance for each of my three buildings, right? So I wanted to have less security guards, which I actually don't think it worked out that way. If we'd only had the car park and then two other buildings, we probably would have had to have about the same amount of security guards, if not less because we actually end up putting cameras in this building, which means we have to hire an additional security guard to watch that. But that's what we did. Um, mostly it was because I wanted to have cool little bridges going across from our car park building to our office and manufacturing buildings, which you can see me trying to build here. We'd actually didn't quite have enough support to do that. So we had to put in some pillars, but that's fine. We were gonna put in pillars anyway. And yeah, so our car park is pretty bare bones, just a little bit of decoration here and there. Uh, and we should be able to finish that off relatively quickly. It's a nice little security entrance uh, where we've got the two bridges going across. Like I said, that was intended to cut down on the amount of security guards we needed, but I don't know if that is actually the case. Either way, it doesn't matter. We should have plenty of money especially once we get all of our new teams in and working on all of the software you could ever think of. Of course, we've got to have some paintings. Got to have paintings just to fill out the walls that little bit and a few little extra decorations and the painting and the, sorry, parking garage should be nice and finished. And like I said before, here are the cameras going in there. That is that. Next, we're moving on to our office building. Now, I knew that I wanted to use the exact same texture for the outside walls as we did in our first office, just a little keep everyone feeling like they're at home, right? This gave me a lot of trouble. I'm trying here to get this path to go around this pillar nicely. Trickier than you might think, but once you know how to do it, it's not that hard. All you need to do, if you see on the left there, we've one, one block away, go up to the wall and then go one block down. It works perfectly, renders perfectly. You can't even tell that it's there unless you're in the path building menu. As for the building itself, I didn't really have a plan here. My main thing was that I wanted a, a regularly shaped building. I didn't want a square block. I feel like that's boring. I feel like that doesn't play into my sort of build style in games like this. So we ended up going with this. Uh, and I knew that I wanted pillars, so we're placing a few more than we need here, but that's fine. We'll get rid of some. Mostly this was just done for spacing reasons so that we could space them out somewhat evenly. Uh, they're a little bit offset. There's a little bit of a larger gap in the middle, but I think it works aesthetically, so I'm not too sad about that. The other thing that I knew that I wanted was some little balcony court courtyard areas, so we'll get those in as well. They turned out really fantastic. I really couldn't be happier with how they came out. You'll have to watch the video to see those in action. And again, just getting the actual entrance to our building. This is where our guests will come in. I assume some of our employees will come in this way as well, but that is what this little front area is here. Get a nice big path up to the door and it'll be all good to go. We actually end up removing this little courtyard area um, in the end. I don't think we needed it. We had so many upstairs that it just wasn't necessary. And then just placing in a few little windows. These are probably not the final position of all of these windows. The main reason that I wanted to add them in is so that we had light coming into the building so we could actually see what we were doing. But yeah, there's our little path, our little entrance. One little tip that I will give you if you are trying to build in this same sort of style, 
Uh, one thing you can do that I learned from a comment on one of my videos in the past, I, sorry I can't remember who it is, uh, you can actually drag out these windows so that they're not all individual windows, they're all one big solid window which is fantastic. And then we'll just change the color of all these to a nice wood color, match those pillars, keep our colors a little bit consistent. Let's see, what are we doing next? Oh, that's right, just adjusting them a little bit so they all match. I do apologize if I forget what is coming up next because like I said, this was recorded over three live streams. Uh, the last one was probably about four days ago, so I've forgotten some stuff, <laughs> but that's all right. Just bear with me. Uh, now we're setting up what is going to be the reception area. You can see that we have done a little bit of a uh, atrium in there, so it's a double story reception area. I think that's just going to be really nice for our guests coming in. And of course, a little logo right above the door so people know they're in the right place. All right, that is pretty much sorted. Now we'll get some doors going out of the reception area and try to figure out what we want to do with this back section. This took a little bit of trial and error, not gonna lie. The first thing I wanted to put in was some toilets and some showers. These will change a little bit right at the end of the build because we did use the modded sinks and apparently the modded sinks don't work. So we had to replace all of the sinks in these rooms but that is what it is. And then just getting a basic layout of our office. So we've got basically two offices on each floor and then two leader offices, as well as a meeting room and a little canteen area. So that is the basic layout uh, going forward. This back section basically goes up the entire length of the building. So it's just a copy paste job. If I hadn't done that, I can't even imagine how long this build would have taken. And you see that little triangle there? This was a pain in my butt. Uh, basically, if you've got an atrium, it's really hard to change the size of that room. I honestly can't figure out how I got this to work. All I know is that I did something and it worked. <laughs> so if you really need to know how to, how to get that to work, I think we figure it out a little bit later with a different area, uh, but the live stream is probably your choice for doing that. Alternatively, if anyone was here in the live stream and remembers how we got that to work, uh, drop a comment and I will pin it if someone can tell us how to change the size and shape of an atrium room because that was just a little bit of a pain. These stairs are basically temporary. We're gonna completely redo these. So you can pretty much just ignore them. And then I decided that I wanted the bathrooms on the other side of this wall, which again was a pain because we had an atrium and that is tricky for some reason. Atriums just don't like doing stuff. So I think we actually had to delete the entire room on both stories and then rebuild it. So <laughs> it was one of those things that just took way more time than it should have. Like, I mean, it's fair, right? This game is not designed to be a building game. So some of its tools are going to be a little bit janky and we just have to sort of live with that. Here again, trying to get that shape right was a pain, but we got there in the end and that's all that matters. Uh, another cool little tip here with this little mezzanine that we're building right now. If you grab the doors that are just the frame, you can do the same thing that you can do with the windows. So if you drag them out, you'll just have a, basically an open two wide door or three wide door or four wide door, however wide you wanna make it. You just drag it out and it gets rid of that beam in the middle that you can see there. Thank you for whoever left that comment on the live stream, very helpful, because that definitely was gonna annoy me if I had to leave a frame right in the middle of that. And then going straight into building our reception. We've got a reception desk here. We also have a security desk here. So they'll be monitoring the door. The receptionist is gonna to have to stand up because they're not allowed to have a seat. And then we've got some lights either side. This is gonna move basically right in front of the logo wall, which I think ended up really looking good. The reception was one of those things that was quite difficult to build. I'm not great at building receptions in this game. I don't like a lot of the chair options that we have available to us, but I ended up with something that I'm pretty happy with and chat definitely helped. They'll take all the credit, but they definitely helped. Uh, I think some of it was me, but chat definitely helped with this. Getting in some shelves here just for the awards. Uh, we did pick all those up before we started this episode. The other thing we did before we started this episode is I fixed the issue with the, uh, I think it was the audio team. I had them selected as doing 3D rather than audio. So that is also fixed when we go back into the live play, that'll be 
all done and dusted just so that I didn't forget. But we're gonna be redoing like all of our teams anyway once this build is finished. So that will be the next episode. Trying to figure out how I wanted these chairs to be laid out. I know we're never really gonna have this many guests in here, but we've got a pretty big reception area. So I feel like we should try and fill it up with some chairs, have like a little waiting room. Maybe this is for deals that come in, what, what have you. Obviously functionally in the game, it's not really gonna matter that much, but I wanted it to look nice. So we ended up with something that I was pretty happy with. Uh, don't worry, these color of these chairs is gonna change. I know everyone on the live stream was concerned about that. There we go, that looks a lot better already. <laughs> and then just trying to figure out a layout that doesn't look too robotic, too repetitive. I wanted it to have a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of decoration here and there. And I think we ended up with something quite nice. And then we do go ahead and actually put carpet under all of this as well. But while we're building that, let me tell you a little bit about the plan going forward with this series. What I want to do next is I want to hire all of the teams in the next episode. So we're going to add a whole bunch of people and I would like each team to be on split shifts. So we'll have two teams for our audio tools. We'll have two teams, two teams for our 3D editor. That way we can get about 16 hours of work per day from about the same amount of employees. So we should be able to get fantastic uh, or outstanding level software rather than the good and great that we've been getting because I honestly just don't think we have enough people working on it right now to get that with our automated teams. So that is the plan for that. I also want to add a uh, update team and a porting team. That will be a, the same team. And they will basically, their sole job is to update all their software and to port all their software to new platforms. And that's going to be fantastic. And then basically I just want to bulk expand, get as many teams in as we can, try to get some a team doing every single piece of development. So we can basically uh, conquer the market and become filthy rich. I mean, we are already pretty rich at the moment, but in this game, that is sort of nothing. You can get definitely into the billions of dollars if you want to. So that is something to consider as well. Like I said in the live stream, this series is not going anywhere just yet. Uh, once we get to a point where I feel like we've done pretty much everything that we can do in the game, we might take a little break, focus on a couple of other games for a little while, but we'll definitely back, be back with another series of this game at some point in the future. Definitely not going to get rid of this game. Really enjoy playing it. And yeah, so yeah, this is basically our reception done and dusted. Just a few little bookshelves going in there and we are good to go. For some reason that security desk won't stay the color that I saved it as, uh, so it's gonna change every time I start up the game. I'm just not gonna worry about it, it is what it is. And then we'll basically just get a nice little coffee station in, in the reception, and that will be pretty much it good to go. The live stream chat hated the vending machines, so we got rid of them. <laughs> I don't know what their problem with vending machines is. They thought it was cheap. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that. Uh, but yeah, this is our reception area. I think it looks quite good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and everyone in chat seemed to be pretty happy with it as well. Next, moving on to the bathrooms. This is pretty quick. Just a toilet in about half of them and a shower in the rest. And we'll add some, uh, add some sinks and some toilet paper as well. And that'll be that. Now we're moving on to our leader offices. So. These take a little bit of trial and error, just finding the right items for the job and figuring out the spacing and all of that. But again, these are basically just going to be copy and pa copy pasted uh, throughout the entire build. So we only need to build one, which is nice. Uh, just looking through all of the items with chat, we had some weird things in there. We have some cars from mods. We have like big dollar signs. We have some strange things in there, uh, which is really quite cool. We didn't end up using any cars. We didn't put a giant car in this guy's office, but <laughs> that is what it is. Uh, the other thing I will mention about something, I was about to say something. I completely forgot what it was. I can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, just decorating this office up. Uh, my thoughts here are basically to make it look as executive as we can. Oh, there you go. There was the car there. And sort of make it spacious, but still inviting. The one thing that I think brought this whole room together was the chair that we placed at the end. 
uh, really happy with the chair choice that we came up with. This gives him somewhere for a someone to come in and sit across from him. If he's got an employee that isn't behaving properly or if he wants to give someone a raise, they can come in, sit in that chair and have a nice little one-on-one -on -one meeting with our manager or our team leader. We prematurely copied this to the other side before we decided to add some extra coffee tables and this chair. This is a chair that I'm talking about, not this specific chair, but it's, it's coming, I promise. Uh, really happy with it. It looks like it might be an outside chair, but the way we colored it, I think it works. I think it works really well and I'm quite happy with it. Next, we're moving on to our main office space. I wanted these desks to not just be simple two by twos because I wanted a couple of extra things in there. So we end up do actually end up using those uh, two high shelves, but we had a little bit of an issue with getting these dividing panels to sit up behind them. For some reason they wouldn't unless we alt clicked them in a little bit forward, which is strange and was a little bit annoying. Uh, the reason we didn't use that one that was flush with the desk was because it only had room for one item on top. I wanted a little bit more than that. So this is basically the des design we go for for all of the cubicles in all of the offices apart from the third story, which we'll get to a little bit later. That way they can have some little stat boosting items right next to them and we don't have to worry about them being sad. So we'll basically copy and paste that as many times as we can in this little room. The one thing that we do 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 uh, is expand this room just a little bit. We shrink the hallways down just a touch and I think we bring it out one more, but I'm no, this is the final size. So I believe we can fit 15 employees in these offices. So we'll have 15 employees plus our team lead for a total of 16. And then if we do a split shift, we can have a maximum of 32 people in a development group basically is how that's going to work. And then again, just a little bit of decoration, some paintings, stuff like that. And that is our final office. Pretty much good to go. Nice little TV somewhere in here, I think. Maybe I didn't put a TV in. Who knows? This was a while ago. COVID really stretched this out more than it should have. Uh, but I am feeling fine now, so don't worry about that. And then just adjusting some colors on some chairs, but that's not too interesting. And yeah, then we just we, we, we decided to experiment a little bit with the carpet. Uh, I think we ended up going with this design here where we have the dark on the outside. Uh, but someone suggested maybe we do the hallways in carpet instead. I ended up not liking this at all. So we went back to the original design of just having carpet under their desks. It'd be a little bit nicer for them. Keep their footsies nice and warm. Uh, but yeah, I did not like the hallway carpets. I think that looked a little bit weird. So just underneath the desks is where the carpet is living. And then for some reason, when we cloned that room to the other side, it flipped all the computers and removed all the chairs. Uh, but that's fine. A little bit of clicking later and they should be all fixed and good to go. We have two offices that we can basically copy up the entire building. Next up, we have our meeting room. Pretty simple room to build, uh, just a giant black table with some chairs around it. We ended up using modded chairs for this, which were really quite nice. I like how these chairs look. They feel very corporate to me, which is kind of the vibe that we were going for. One thing that I do know we do is we expand these rooms out just a little bit more, uh, cut that hallway down to the bathrooms just a little bit because I felt like it was a little bit excessive, if I'm being perfectly honest. And we've got a shelving unit with four fridges, four mini fridges on it. So people can bring in their own food if they would like to. The other thing we do with the kitchen is we make sure they're all stacked up perfectly vertical with each other. That is because there has been an update to the beta version of the game where you can use conveyor belts to move food from a kitchen to different canteens. So once that comes into the actual game, I'm considering making a video specifically to feed our staff with an actual kitchen and convey a belt up to each of these canteens. So that is why they're all stacked perfectly on top of each other. And then just figuring out a layout for the tables. Uh, we ended up going with a similar design to our initial one. We have round tables. Unfortunately, these octagonal tables only had room for four chairs, whereas these ones have room for like 16. So that is what we ended up going with. But with all our terraces, our courtyards and our verandas, I really don't think we're going to struggle with the amount of seats we have in our canteens. Each floor is going to have about 32 employees. Uh, so 
I believe, I can't remember how many seats each of these tables had, but I think we ended up with about 16 chairs in total, uh, but they can go elsewhere to eat. And if they can't find somewhere to eat, they will eat at their desk. So they will be perfectly fine. And then again, obviously, more paintings. We ended up with a lot of cat paintings in this office build. Uh, that was mostly just because we were live streaming at the time. Uh, but yeah, that was fun to see. I think they come a little bit later. I get a little bit uh, lazy with the variety on the paintings and we go with just cat paintings everywhere. They are different cat paintings, mind you. Uh, they're from a mod, but yeah, a lot of cat paintings for sure. And then again, nice little plants in our hallways just to keep everything looking nice and fancy and a little bit corporate because everyone loves that. Unfortunately, we tried to put TVs on top of these benches. It worked on the first floor, but when we copied everything up and then reloaded the game for the next stream, uh, it basically said no one could reach them. So we had to remove them. And I believe in their place, we put more cat paintings. <laughs> a little bit of an area just outside the elevators for people to sit and wait. If the elevators are being slow, they can sit down and wait for the elevators there. That'll be fine. And then just going around everywhere before we copy and paste this whole thing, putting in some lights, putting in some fire alarms, putting in some sprinklers, all that safety sort of stuff. We do leave the um, air conditioning and heating till the very end. And we just auto build those uh, because I didn't feel like putting in like 60,000 air conditioning vents <laughs> in all of our buildings uh, once we're already at the 11 hour mark. The other thing I will mention here is this build is available on the Steam Workshop. Having a little bit of trouble updating it, we had some issues right at the end that I had to change and then I had to re-upload it. So I might delete that from the workshop before this video goes live and try to re-upload it with the new final version. So if you're interested in that, just search for Panda Inc HQ on the Steam Workshop and you should be able to find it there if you wanna try it out. Just keep in mind uh, that you might also need the seed for this build, which I will put down in the description as well if you're interested in that. And it will be in the Steam description as well. The other thing to keep in mind, if you are uh, building this in your own game, you will need some mods. There are a lot of modded items in this build. Uh, I don't know exactly which mods we used for it. So I basically just put dependencies for every single mod that I had. So if you want all my mods, uh, except for the you know code mods that do the like better deals and better software and sync lib and stuff like that. They're not included. It's just the furniture mods. If you want all my mods, they are in that Steam Workshop as well. So check the link in the description for that. And this is basically the general layout of the building. Uh, just copying and pasting everything up, making sure it all works. We have nice, big, beautiful offices. And we have a lot of them, so we have a lot of room to grow. And if we ever need to grow any further than this, we can absolutely just copy and paste the top floor, move it up. Easy as that. Well, I say easy as that. We do have to consider building the roof, but we didn't actually end up putting anything on the roof of the office building itself. So it should be as easy as that. And then just changing the texture of the roof. But yeah, uh, I decided to move all those windows out just so that it looks a little bit better and make sure that our canteen is on the same exact position on our third floor because our third floor is where everything changes a little bit. This is our floor for all of our support staff, all of our marketing staff, our upgrade teams and our accounting teams. So we have four offices on this floor uh, as well as leader offices for each, just splitting it up and making the build a little bit more varied rather than copy pasted everywhere. Some uh, little bathrooms in there as well. So everyone can go to the toilet during the day. And yeah, so this, this floor is a little bit different to the rest, uh, a little bit more custom. And we do also color our rooms for our different teams. I really like how this floor turned out, uh, it was a little bit annoying to build in places because we had such an odd layout and nothing was square. Everything have has curves. But one of the things that we definitely did on this floor that I'm really proud of is that little balcony courtyard area. It turned out so well. I'm really happy with how that looks and I'm really quite excited to see our staff go out there and then hopefully enjoy that on their lunch breaks. I don't know if they will, 
but I really hope they do because we spent a fair amount of time on it and it turned out really quite nicely. I think that's what we're starting right now. Uh, we ended up going with a little bit of a cobbled floor and these half tables with sort of oddly placed chairs so it looks like it's been used a little bit. People move the chairs around as they sit and talk so that is what that is. We have little benches in the gaps between the windows, some plants here and there. Unfortunately, because we are using the cobbled thing, we can't actually have the trees out here anymore, so they will disappear. And you can see it here. This is the cobbled floor that we went with. And these little benches, those little benches, I think make the space just a little bit. Really cool place to go and eat lunch. I'm really happy with how that turned out. So yes, hope you guys like that as well. Moving on, we're basically just filling out these offices. Uh, not a lot to say here. We do have a little meeting room here, as well as the canteen that we copied and pasted. This meeting room is a little bit different to the others, just for, a, again, a little bit of variety. Nothing too special here, just some, you know, coffee machines, some plants, big table for everyone to have their meetings, a little water cooler and some more plants. And of course, can't forget the pictures. Gotta have pictures on the wall. <laughs> And yeah, I think that'll be a quite a nice little meeting room. Hopefully they these teams use it. We need to definitely make sure we hire uh, our team leads to have the capacity to hold meetings because we do have meeting rooms on every single floor. So it would be a shame to waste those. And plus you get a little bit of an efficiency boost when you have team meetings anyway. Uh, it's more important that you have team meetings when you have larger teams. I feel like if you've only got two people and you have a team lead and an employee and they go in for a meeting, that meeting could take them like an hour, an hour and a half of their day where they're both just not working. They will get a boost to their efficiency, but boosting two people's efficiency is way less appealing than boosting 15 people's efficiency, right? So it's sort of, you've got to weigh in whether or not you've got enough staff in your team to make that work. Cool little detail in this leader office. He's got a little window looking into the team uh, room so we can see all his employees working unfortunately we couldn't get these tables to sit right in this corner but we ended up just changing it up a little bit to make it a little bit nicer and making the hallway just that little bit bigger so that is what it is in there making sure our team lead has coffee so he's not super cranky with his employees in the morning and giving him all the basics you know water cooler clock calendar all that kind of stuff and then again we're just building desks uh, this 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 floor did have more two by two desks than anything else. I think it's exclusively two by two, uh, all just divided by dividers, just so that we could fit a few more people in here. Uh, and again, to change it up a little bit because we have those sort of two by two cubicles rather than two by one. Sorry, I think I said two by two. These are two by one. We have the two by two cubicles on basically every other floor in this building. So. I wanted something a little bit different, so we went with the two by ones for all of our support staff. And hopefully they'll be happy enough with that. We definitely got enough of the, you know, decorative items in to keep everyone happy and boosted. We did check that on the stream. Everyone has, you know, effectiveness, skill, and whatever the other one is, boosted up to 25%. So no need to, to worry there. Then again, just some bookshelves, a little bit of a TV, and some pictures. This basically just repeats. Uh, <laughs> we do a little bit of copy and pasting with the leader desks. I think that was a good choice. Saved us a little bit of time in building these offices. We tried to make them a little bit unique with the decorations around the room, but their desks themselves are basically all similar. So that is that. And I like the idea of them having little bikes in their, in their offices, like they're too good to put them in the bike racks that we had in the car park. Obviously they're not functional, they just kind of look cool. Uh, who knows if they actually even ride them. Maybe they just brought them in on their first day and left them in their office because they like to show off their bike to all their employees while they're having meetings in there. <laughs> who knows? Team leaders are weird, man. But yes. And the other thing I wanted on this floor is I wanted the desk layouts to not be exactly the same, even though they are all two by ones. I wanted the actual layout of the desks themselves to be a little bit unique and a little bit varied. We did try and basically fit in about 15 employees in each of these rooms. Uh, we do have, you know, like support and accounting in these rooms as well. We're going to have way too many seats for the accountants, but I figure as we grow, we'll have the room if we need it to expand those teams out 
and not have any concerns. I am excited for sure to have more seats for our marketing teams though, because I feel like they needed to grow quite a while ago, uh, but we just didn't have the space to do so, which is what it is. And we should also have no more problems with uh, the buses filling up and not enough car parks because we definitely have a good amount of car parking. And again, if we need more, we can always just copy and paste that complex up another floor or two to get more parking in. And that will be no problems at all. They'll have ele elevators to get down to that third floor where they can walk across the bridge and get to their offices. So that is all good. Again, just decorating. Just decorating, making everything look nice, a little bit unique. And like I said before, we did end up coloring these desks as well, just so that we could distinguish between the different teams without having to have labels on all the time, because I am absolutely going to forget which team lives in which room. <laughs> and to be honest, we'll probably have labels on a lot of the time to check because I will also forget what color we assigned to each team, but that is what it is. We can't fix my brain forgetting stuff like that. So that's why there's labels in the game, I guess. And then again, obviously we need pictures. Got to have the pictures. It's like the rocks in city skylines. Just got to have pictures on the wall. <laughs> and then we go again, another leader office, another office. And yeah, it's going to be good. I am really excited about having the uh, space to fill up all of the software niches so that we can just get everything rolling. Uh, we'll probably do one at a time. I don't want to overload my senses. I want to be able to keep a track of how everything is going and making sure everything is running smoothly. So we'll probably do one team at a time, but we absolutely have the room to fit in uh, people for every single software type, which is exciting. I'm thinking once we do end up finishing this series and going on to a new one, we might do a modded series where we have modded softwares. So it's not just that basic list of like six or seven softwares that we can do. We can change it up, develop a whole range of different things, maybe add some more manufacturing in, which I think will be cool as well. Uh, my video is starting to lag as we go through this, but we are back to good so I can see what's happening again. And again, we just need to add in some lights. I imagine we probably do our fire alarms and sprinklers at the same time here, but you never know. Uh, we're basically going to see if I managed to get fire alarms and sprinklers in every room. I think I did, but we'll have to wait till the fire inspector comes to actually know if that's the case or not. I have a feeling we probably missed something somewhere. But that's fine. I mean, it's just a little bit of a fine and then the, he can tell me where I missed them and we can chuck them in without any problems. Getting our final lights in here and it is all lit up. And again, we're just moving back to the car park because I forgot to add lighting in here as well. <laughs> well I went to nighttime so that I could see where was lit and where wasn't and we should be good to go there. And yeah, adding sprinklers, like I said, uh, I imagine that means we did fire alarms as well, but I didn't see it happen. And then going back to these stairs now that we have all of our floors put in. Uh, and oh, putting in sprinklers and fire alarms in the car park as well. Someone must have mentioned that to me in chat because I probably forgot. But yes, for our stairs going up and down here, I wish we had like dividing glass walls that went all the way to the ceiling. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So we've got these little banisters that sort of act in the same way. These stairs probably aren't OSHA compliant, but they're good enough for the game. Uh, I, I really don't like the way that stairs look in this game. I wish you could have just like a staircase that went on top of each other. You can have one, but it's long and narrow. And I, I, I used it for the manufacturing building, but I didn't use it here. So that is what it is, I suppose. And just doing the same thing for our parking garage as well. A little bit of final decorating on the third floor of our office building because I didn't do this hallway. So that's just going to be some plants and some paintings. Nothing too special there. All pretty good and easy to go. If you are enjoying this video that took definitely over 14 hours to make, please do make sure you go ahead and like the video and subscribe while we are going here. And also leave a comment with the favorite part of your build or your least favorite part of the build. Let me know what it is. 
Moving on to our second little balcony courtyard area. This one we went for the wooden planks that actually match our pillars. This one, again, I'm really happy with how these little outside areas turned out. I haven't built a lot of outside areas in this game before, so coming in and trying this out with a couple of the mods that we have, these turned out really quite nicely. Those little round chairs, I hope people use them, really make the build, I think. They just give it this little accent where people can sit and just chat. It feels like almost like the smoking area. <laughs> if you've been to any of the bars in uh, Australia, it definitely reminds me of chairs that are set out in little smoking areas. But yeah, that is that. And then going on to our third and final courtyard area as we try and build a fence in the sky because I forget what floor we are. This one, we actually stay with grass. So we're gonna put some trees in, we're gonna put a nice little fountain in and a little pathway that I hope works. We had to do some interesting things with the fences, basically putting gates the whole way around it so that it looks like they're just two textures blended together. As you can see here, we draw this out as a little circle around the, the fountain. And then we just go in with the gate fences to get rid of those glass barriers. Hopefully that means people can walk from one to the other. I'm not 100% sure if it will. We haven't tested some of this. That'll happen in the next video. Hopefully, if we can actually unpause in the next video. I'm hoping we can. Uh, but yeah, just putting in some nice little seating areas out here. A little bit more of a natural balcony, a natural courtyard for this area. I think it turned out quite nice. It's probably my least favorite of all the outdoor spaces, but I don't know. I feel like if we wanted to get more into this, we'd need some more items that are specifically designed for nature areas. I also wouldn't mind a better grass texture because it does just look like a flat green plane. Um, but that's just, you know, my little nitpick. Obviously this game isn't designed to, to you know, design uh, big outdoor spaces like this, so it's fine. One thing I really do like about this area is the lights that we put in. We actually change all of these to the uh, upwards facing lights that are flush to the floor, which I think look really good and give this like a little bit of an accent that I definitely think it needs. We also change these ones here as well. Uh, this tree wouldn't behave, but just rotating it fixed that. And with that, that's pretty much our office space done and dusted, I believe. The only other thing left to do is draw in a roof and figure out what we want to do there. The basic plan here was to match it to the roofs of all of the surrounding skyscrapers, just so that we can blend in a little bit with our surroundings. Obviously our building is a lot bigger than all of those buildings combined. Well, not combined, but all of those buildings are quite small. We have quite a little complex office complex uh, working for us here. In my opinion, the skyscrapers in the background are a little bit small. I feel like they should be a little bit bigger, maybe even just like bulkier, uh, but that is what it is. Next, we're moving on to our manufacturing building. This building is nowhere near as interesting, although with some of the details we add at the end, it does become a little bit more pleasing to look at. Uh, basically trying to remember how I did the path thing again. Uh, that's the reason I know how it worked is because I had to do it twice. So if you saw there, just click one side of the pillar up to the wall and then down to the other side of the pillar. And that is good to go. And then we just have just a giant, I think it ends up being like five stories uh, building of manufacturing. This building does definitely does not get filled up. We have so much room to expand this if we need to increase our capacities at any point. But that is sort of what I wanted. I wanted a space where we didn't have to worry about, you know, fitting everything into a nice tight space. We've got room to grow if we need to. And just changing the wall colors and the floor colors to make it a little bit more industrial and then figuring out our stairwell here, which will also have elevators, just for those curious. These are the stairs I was talking about before. They're a modded stair that can be stacked on top of each other. Hopefully they work. The only thing that I don't like about them is you can't put a railing on them. Uh, so we ended up using those banisters again, but it was a little bit finicky to get that to work. The size of this room changes so many times, but I think this is almost the final form. Uh, and then just again, trying to get these banisters in right next to the stairs was a pain. We couldn't get them right up to it, but for some reason we could build them and then move them over. So I don't know what that's about, but you'll see that here in a second we end up getting them a little bit closer than what you see here. 
which is nice because it was annoying me, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, so yeah, that is that done and dusted. Just making sure you don't have things blocking. But you can see, yeah, we move the stairs over and everything works. And then we grab both the stairs and the banister and move it back against the wall. And for some reason, it just, it works. I don't understand what that is. Now the basic plan in the manufacturing area is to have conveyor belts going along that side wall there and they'll all go straight up to the roof where they'll be shipped off by helicopters. Basic plan, pretty simple, uh, and then everything is going to be connected to that. A little tip here, if you'll see those printers, you can actually put two large printers on one conveyor belt. If you just face them towards each other, they'll both connect and you'll double your capacity without using quite as much room which is really quite nice. And then in the printing area as well, we have room to expand that out another three times, which I think would give us a total of 10 million units per month, which is a little bit insane. We've just got currently about 2.5 million. So definitely it's gonna be fine going there. And then just designing our conveyor belt systems for each and every one of the uh, hardware options that we have. I think it's phones, computers, and uh, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's joysticks is the third one uh, and we just have each of them on their own floor if we need to we can copy and paste that over double our capacity and then maybe triple our capacity and quadruple our capacity if we have the room for it but honestly I don't think we'll need to expand these a ton the only other thing that's in this building is some servers and then on the roof we're going to have a little bit of power generation and some batteries and we're also gonna throw a security guard in there as well which is probably not the most comfortable office but as someone pointed out on the stream he's actually a contractor so we don't actually need to keep him happy he can just sit in that room with a whole bunch of batteries uh, which should ensure that his security terminal never goes flat just saying that's gonna be my justification for it and if you don't like it then uh, yeah I don't know what to tell you but this was pretty straightforward. I mean, the only the only slight issue that we had with this was we couldn't get, uh, once you get a deal, you can see a screen that tells you like the optimal number of machines you need for each, each component. Because we didn't have deals running and we didn't have products set up for these, we couldn't see that. So I actually had to screenshot the uh, assembly line things with the times on them, put them on my second monitor and then figure out from that how many of each each machine we needed. I believe I got all the ratios right and we should have a completely optimized system for the optimal output but if we get any of that wrong we can check that whenever we get a deal for each of the different items. I have actually never seen uh, a, a deal for a joystick but we have the option to be able to print it if anyone does ever come up with that deal for us. Again, like I said, this is a pretty basic building. Uh, we are putting in a little bit of industrial ventilation. I'm not 100% sure that it's necessary, but I feel like it's it's appropriate for a building like this. I feel like there is a lot of things happening. Like I imagine there's some plastics that would be melted from this and you don't want to be breathing that in. So the industrial ventilation is going to do two things. It's going to keep the rooms cool so our machines don't overheat and it's going to get rid of a lot of our fumes that hopefully are going through filters of some description. And then we're basically just putting windows on this. That was a little bit divided as to whether or not we should. The main reason I wanted to was because I didn't really want to put lights in these rooms. That felt a little bit redundant, but I did want to be able to see in there. And if you don't have any windows, it's like pitch black. So that's the main reason for the windows. Plus it makes the outside of the building look a little bit more interesting. I can appreciate that a building like this probably wouldn't have this many windows because people don't want you looking into buildings like this quite that much but it sort of is what it is and then moving on to the roof this takes a couple of little iterations a little bit of fancy work there with the fences to make our roof completely full and flat and yeah we'll move that roof down because I decided that I wanted some stuff on top and we'll extend that that little hallway uh, what's it called exit and entrance the stairwell stairwell is the word I was looking for up a little bit and get some heating and cooling on the top of this building. And because we have those bridges going to everywhere else, we don't have to worry about cooling them separately. We can just put all of our cooling and heating in here. Uh, we did a little bit of calculations and we figured out we needed eight 
coolers and eight heaters to keep this entire building uh, up and running, which is a little bit insane, but I mean, this is a large building, so I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. We went for the heaters that go on the outside of the wall and they are electric. The reason that we did that is because I wanted to put some solar panels in and at some point we might buy another plot and put in some wind turbines. But for now, we're just gonna go with the solar panels and call that a day. We do get a lot in, so we'll have to keep an eye on our electricity bills as, as we go forward in this series and see if we are actually making our money back with our electricity. I'm not sure if you can sell electricity to the grid like you can here in Australia in this game, but it would be kind of cool if you could use excess power as a way to supplement your income. And again, did you see there, we did put in fire alarms. I don't know if we put sprinklers in though. Yeah, we did, there we go, there they go. And then that top floor is basically just a whole room full of batteries and a security guard. <laughs> that's all that's in that room. And I imagine it just sounds like electricity in that room, uh, but hopefully our guy doesn't mind too much. And again, like I said before, we're just replacing all of those sinks. And the final thing we do, we get rid of some of these solar panels because I, I realized that we actually need to be able to access them so that we can repair them. And with the building portion of the video complete, I figure it's probably time to take you on a little tour. So this is what we've come up with. I am more than happy with it. I think it looks fantastic. And I hope you guys do too. Like I said before, if you did skip to this part of the video, you probably wouldn't have heard it. But the link to the Steam Workshop download of this is on in the description. So please do check that out if you are interested in having a little play with it in your world. I'll also include the world seed so that you can put it in the exact same location with this little park and this little subway station in the background. Really quite cute. So if we jump down to the ground floor and start with our parking area, pretty basic little parking area. Uh, we've got three floors of parking, each with a certain number of parking spaces uh, and a little bit of bike parking here as well. But where it starts to get interesting is our little entrance building here. Obviously we've got our elevators going up and down as well as our stairs in case there is a fire, a little security camera and some just basic decorations. This is pretty much copy and pasted all the way up, except for the third floor, where we will have our security officer sitting, making sure no one is walking into the building that shouldn't be walking into the building. For instance, burglars. Uh, burglar, bur how do you say that word? Burglars? You know what I mean. Uh, he should stop everyone from coming in, he or she should stop everyone coming in. And then we have a nice little hallway going to both of our separate buildings. But we'll jump back down to the ground floor and have a look at our office. So we're starting off with our reception. I'm just going to toggle the lights off so that we don't have to see them the whole time. This is our nice little reception area with our little mezzanine. I think this turned out quite nicely. I couldn't be happier with it. Uh, reception areas in this game are a little bit tricky to build in my opinion, especially when you want to have quite so this many seats in there. And then it's pretty simple little reception area. We have some nice plants at the back. We have room for our security desk. And like I said in the time lapse, this table won't retain its colors for some reason. I think it might be just a problem with the mod, uh, but that sort of is what it is. They match close enough that I'm not too worried about it. Bunch of seating and all of our awards, as well as some books and a little coffee table. That's pretty much it for the reception. Then we just have a nice little hallway that connects everything, connects our little elevator area and our stair area to our main offices. And of course, our bathrooms. They're pretty tight, but they should work. People shouldn't complain about them. They should get the job done. And as we move through, we come into our meeting room. Nice little water cooler, TV on the wall, some pictures, some plants, calendar, and a nice big desk that should hopefully have enough seats to fit everyone in. Uh, it has, oh my goodness, it's so bright. <laughs> uh, it has 14 chairs, which is actually not enough, but people go out call it sick pretty often. So hopefully 14 chairs is enough in here. If not, people can stand up at the back. I don't actually think they can, but hopefully they will. And then if we move into our little canteen, pretty simple. I really like this containment unit. Uh, it's just called a cabinet because it can fit in four little mini fridges in there, which is nice. So people can bring their own food from home if they want to. We also have a vending machine, a sink, and a coffee machine. 
in each of these as well as some nice little decorations. And then we come into our offices. These each fit 15 employees, pretty nice and simple. Uh, all their desks are pretty much the same as each other. I probably should have gone in and edited some of these so it wasn't just plants and a picture on every single desk, but it is what it is. Maybe we'll get to that at one day, one day, but I'm telling you we probably won't. <laughs> and then we just have some nice little tables, little uh, nooks on the side there for people. Maybe they put their things in there or they can put them in their own little things here. As well as like a nice little globe, some fruit. Uh, and then we also have a mini fridge and a coffee machine in each little office as well as a heater and some cooling. That's pretty much it. And then we move on to our leader offices, which I'm quite happy with, specifically this chair. <laughs> I really like how this chair looks. I don't think anyone will ever sit in it, but I like it. And we have a nice little TV at the end with some end tables and some grass, some bookshelves, some more bookshelves, pretty simple. That is basically mirrored on the other side here and is also mirrored all the way up the building until you get to the roof. The only difference is the third floor here. This room is gonna be for our marketing teams in this room here, support team, update team, and our accounting teams. I haven't completely finished designating all the rooms and stuff yet, so those labels will probably change in the next episode. But that is this. So as you come up the stairs, you are greeted with a nice little hallway that leads straight to a giant meeting room with a nice little accent table here, some glass in the middle. Just thought that looked pretty cool. We have some TVs here. They can be used for presentations and such. And then of course, the corporate plants, coffee machine, some fruit. I feel like that's a pretty decent sort of meeting room there. Our canteen is exactly the same and it does is in the exact same place as every other canteen. That is in case we ever want to use conveyor belts to get food up to these buildings. We have some nice bathrooms in the hallway and then we go off into each of our rooms. So this one is for our support team. Support team leader will live in here. Support team in here. And then we have marketing over here. I tried to make these a little bit different for each room. And again, we've color coded the desks uh, so that they're a little bit different all the way around. And then of course we have our accounting team up here. This is clearly way too many seats for an accounting team, but as we expand, we, we shouldn't have any problems with the amount of accountants we can house in here. For some reason there's no picture on this wall uh, and I don't know why, but I actually don't, I don't mind it. I kind of like it. Just sort of splits up that room a little bit. And of course we have our update and porting teams down here. That is basically it for our office building, apart from our little balconies. So this is our first balcony for the third floor. Turned out quite nicely. Uh, just some seats that aren't all the same. Makes this feel a little bit more used, I believe. And then my favorite little seats. Uh, for those of you wondering, these are called cast concrete cylinders. And I'm actually, they are seats which is good. So hopefully we see some people sitting on those, but I'm not 100% sure that we will. I'm really hoping that we see some people sitting out here in general. And then if we move up, we have two more outdoor spaces. This one is our more natural one, filled with some grass, some trees, plenty of seating, and a nice little fountain as well, as well as these nice little lights that will show up in the dark if we turn the lights off, or we make it nighttime rather, and see those lights come up quite nicely there. If we move up, we also have the nice little logo on the wall there, just to remind people that they are at work. <laughs> Very important. And then our final little outdoor area is a nice little wooden one, again, with some nice lighting, but we'll turn it back to day just so that we can see a little bit better. These are a little bit more full. I feel like this is more like maybe a function area. If we had like a birthday party, maybe all the teams could come out here and enjoy this space and celebrate someone's birthday. Turn that UI off again. And then if we go back to the ground floor once more, we have our manufacturing building. And now there is no entrance down here. The only way to get into this building is through this little hallway through the car park. So we don't need dedicated security here, which is nice. And it's pretty simple. Uh, on this floor, we are manufacturing uh, joysticks, I believe, <laughs> I think. I'm actually not 100% sure. All I know is we're manufacturing one thing on each of the floors. So we are manufacturing 
uh, joysticks on one level, consoles on another, phones on another. We're not doing embedded systems because that's a contract thing and we don't have contracts enabled in impossible mode. So this is our layout for whatever this is. Uh, we can probably figure it out. If I set this output, we have cases. Yeah, this is joysticks on this ground floor. So if you're looking for a layout for a joystick, go ahead and save this. Uh, we just have final assemblers here and this is a recycler. The rest should be pretty straightforward. Just follow the guide uh, that's provided in the game. And we move up a level. We have our phone operating systems on this floor. It's a little bit bulkier and a little bit more complicated. We did need to use these raised conveyor belts just so that people could access this one and this one. If you jam all four of these together, it won't work because people won't be able to come in and repair either of these two machines if you've got conveyor belts coming out the front the whole way around. So they do need access to those because they have an input at the back and an output at the front. They do need to have some way to get to these two. So that is our phone operating system. Again, if you want to copy in, copy this, you are more than welcome to take a screenshot check out what my layout does. I'll move it this way so it's a little bit easier to follow. Again, we just have that recycler there and our final assemblers at the front here. Pretty straightforward, pretty good to go. If you don't want to uh, screenshot the video and copy it from this, you can also go to the link in the description, check out the Steam Workshop, put this down and then maybe you could make your own blueprints out of these rooms or something. And then coming up again, we have our final thing, which is our consoles. They are much simpler and we can definitely copy and paste this over at least two more times, maybe three, if we want to increase our output at any point in time. Moving up one final level, we have our uh, printers. These are printing our software. And as you can see, like I said, in the time lapse, you can actually have two of these product printers on the same belt and they will work. So that's a nice little tip if you are interested. Moving up one more floor, we have our helipads, which will de deliver all of our products to where they need to go, as well as a whole ton of batteries. We currently have 92 batteries, <laughs> as well as our air conditioning, heating, and our little security guards office. The only other thing in this building is our little staircase and our elevator. And then we move up one more floor, we have a little door out so that we can have servicing going on on these. Hopefully these don't degrade. And if they do, they get repaired down here, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. I also don't know where these get repaired. They might be repaired inside. We'll have to keep an eye, see if these break uh, because we haven't tested anything just yet. But yeah, that is our manufacturing building. That is our entire office. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm excited to get to the next episode where we start hiring teams to fill out all of these offices. But yeah, that's about it. If you enjoyed the build, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment for the sake of engagement. Let me know what your favorite part of the build is or your least favorite part. Either way is fine. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell. But until next time, happy building and happy building. Bye guys. <laughs>